All righty, let's get started. So everybody, thanks for jumping on. Uh, this is our first time doing this, so appreciate your support and uh, what will be a series of webinars. Uh, we're gonna keep this as a standing meeting uh, and a way for folks to join and learn a little bit more about Elementum without you know, feeling the pressure of taking a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And so the topics will range. We'll have you know guest speakers that we're lining up um, but the overall intent is to talk about what we're seeing in the industry, uh, share the success of our customers and the difference that our product has made. Uh, so for this week, we're going to talk about something that has been uh, a hot topic this year. And with some recent developments in the industry, I think folks will all recognize the, the importance of it into next year which will be shipping into retailers that have specific delivery standards and subsequent penalties. Um, and everybody who you know, ships into the 800 pound gorillas, Walmart, Amazon, uh, is already very familiar with this. But I think one of the things that we've started to see in the industry this year, first of all, is you know, a relaxation of the standard uh, with COVID, but other retailers and other entities uh, starting to pile onto this trend of actually uh, inflicting, if you will, these delivery standards and penalties on their suppliers. And so I was talking to a customer a couple of weeks ago um, that had told us, you know, we obviously expect this from Walmart and Amazon, um, but I got in a letter from a, a customer that I had never even heard of, a really small account that said that they were gonna start uh, issuing penalties on late shipments too. And so now a customer or an account that I'd never even, never even thought about or heard about um, is going to become a, a big issue. Uh, and so we're seeing this impact and there's lots of uh, you know, reporting and consulting on this, but uh, what we see is that this issue is a seven figure problem for most, for most suppliers. Um, the, the amount of business obviously you do with a retailer correlates with how big the issue is. Um, but what we typically see is that it's between, you know, a, a, point, a percentage point of revenue to a quarter percentage point of revenue that's actually impacted by deductions. Now, when we talk about deductions, there are, you know, the cost of doing business, there's the trade related deductions like pricing and promotions. Um, what we're going to focus on and what this data is around is actually the logistics related disruptions uh, and deductions, which could be thought of as, you know, maybe... Uh, late shipments over short damage, these types of things. And while a quarter of a percent of revenue is maybe doesn't seem like a lot, um, when we look at the impact on you know gross margin or operating profit, uh, this can be a significant avoidable cost that if we can start to get a handle on can make a big difference. Um, and so the current state is that you know these deductions are costing around you know twenty thousand dollars a week of of just uh, of just erosion. And as I mentioned, you know, there's a lot in the industry going on with the fact that these delivery standards are changing uh, and that they're going up. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you uh, probably received the same uh, type of letter uh, that one of our customers sent us about a new, a new on time and full program from a certain, from a certain retailer uh, where they're going to be raising, uh, where they're going to be raising their standards. And so this is a, this is an issue that not only Walmart, but uh, other Others in the industry are starting to uh, increase as well. And I think right now, maybe some of you on the, on the call or, or folks who are listening afterward are in the process of uh, getting ready for the new Supplier Quality Excellence Program. Um, I think in you know, early September, this, this email was sent out to get ready. Uh, there are certain phases around PO accuracy, you know, ASN, uh, making sure ASNs are sent. Uh, and these types of things. And so a lot of folks that we talk to are in the process of figuring out how they're gonna tackle this come February, 2021, when this goes live. And the theme of the webinar today is that you can use exception management uh, and a platform approach to get a handle on these deductions, to actually, uh, you know, kind of the David and Goliath, to, to go against uh, the, the, the status quo of these retailers and, and fight back and keep track of what's going on from your point of view and be able to measure what's going on um, with the deductions. So there's sort of three, there's sort of three um, phases of the life cycle of using exception management uh, to manage these deductions. And these are things that 
are maybe not done at all today uh, in your organization, or maybe they're done to a certain degree, but you'd like to uh, handle them more efficiently uh, or more effectively. Uh, but at a high level, the first thing we need to do is we need to track, we need to track the deductions. We need to track them all. Uh, we, need to, we need to have them all in one place uh, so that we can see what's going on. The next step is obviously disputing those deductions uh, themselves. Uh, and so whether it's, you know, maybe getting internal uh, investigation kicked off, uh, finding out who knew what, when, you know, did the warehouse, you know, making sure they complete a cycle count, uh, making sure that they put the right amount of inventory on the shipment, um, maybe reaching out to the carrier and seeing, hey, what, what happened with this, right? There's this whole investigation process to dispute uh, those charges. Uh, and then adjust. How can we actually learn from our past and address root causes that may be driving systemic issues? Again, these three steps may be uh, implemented to some degree in your organization, um, but how do we how do we make them better and more effective? Um, that's the that's the kind of thing that an exception management platform uh, can really start to help with. And where we look at the the current state for managing these issues today it's often being managed in a combination of uh, an ERP system, uh, maybe a trade promotions management system, uh, but also email and Excel spreadsheets. Uh, that is really the status quo. And the reason for that is that there are not a lot of systems that can help be the single source of truth for the exceptions, uh, like, an, like what an ERP system would be, like an SAP system. Um, while also having the ease of collaboration and workflow that's required to investigate and maybe dispute uh, these, these issues. And then even on top of that, actually measuring that process, that process of is one, uh, something like an ERP system just isn't really designed to do. And so that's, that's the gap that an exception management platform can help, uh, can help actually fill. And so we'll, we'll talk about each of these three phases now within the Elementum solution. And if you're joining or if you're, uh, if you're just kind of getting up to speed and you have questions, feel free to use the chat uh, and I will, I, will get to your questions, um, I will get to your questions as we go along here. Um, but let's start with the, and I'll open up the chat so I can see if things are coming through. Uh, so let's start with that first phase. The first thing is we need to track, we need to track all the issues. And often these are done uh, for most of the people I talk to in an Excel spreadsheet today. Uh, we have an Excel spreadsheet. Somebody from accounts receivable or customer service is doing their darndest to keep that thing up to date uh, with the latest and the greatest. Um, but they're often having to go to multiple portals to do this. Um, I often hear, hey, I got an email with you know, 17 attachments and I have to key, I have to key this stuff in. Um, so there's a lot of work being done to maintain the spreadsheet. And the problem with that is that, you know, in, in terms of manual data accuracy, that's one thing, but getting visibility to other stakeholders uh, to what those issues are and making sure that data is up to date as teams are working on those issues is a huge time, uh, a, a huge time investment. And so one of the things that we've done is we've tried to replicate the experience of managing the issues in a way that we're familiar but in a cloud platform that can be updated and dynamic. And so in our system, we know that there are a lot of different ways to uh, find out about deductions. And so we've developed uh, multiple ways of actually getting that information into the system. Uh, and so the first may be, look, I just need to key in a record. I need to be able to go in and actually uh, just create a record of the deduction itself. The second may be, I get an email from retail link, from a portal, from whatever. And I can actually then forward that email to Elementum so that it shows up automatically as a record in the system. And it will have you know, the content on the, uh, the subject line. It'll have all the content within the description of the issue as well. The third way is actually using uh, an Excel upload. And so we have a macro that can be used on whatever standard report is used today to actually upload that information in bulk as a one-time process or as a continuous process as well. But then the, the fourth way is a more automated approach, which actually leverages an API 
that can integrate to both an SAP system, uh, like SAP, AFX, you know, whatever, AFS, or it can actually integrate to the retail's portal directly. And so the idea here is we want to, we want to bring everything into one place in a way that's easy, um, but also, you know, uh, also captures all the information uh, that we need to. Now within, within the incident list, we can now look at the data in any way that we need to, to be able to assess what's going on. So if I want, for example, you know, if you want to look at your account, uh, if I want to look at everything going on with Walmart, I might want to see uh, specifically those related issues. I can easily look at those particular reports and see, okay, show me all the deductions related to Walmart. If I want to see shortages or logistics related issues, um, issues where the root cause was the carrier, right? I can easily, uh, I can easily create those reports and then I can reference them at any given time. And so the, again, the idea here is we're tracking, we need to track the issues first and make sure that every issue is in one place. Along with that, every issue needs to have an owner, right? And this may be, this may change over the course of the, the resolution. Initially, it might be somebody from accounts receivable who is managing and triaging the issues. But this also helps us keep track of who's accountable for the problem and where does the problem sit uh, currently in its process of being resolved. Let's talk about the second, the second phase of actually disputing the deduction. Within each, uh, within each deduction or in each detail page, um, there's a workspace now for the team to be able to resolve. And what this replaces is all the email back and forth that often happens because it's really hard to measure a process run on email. It's hard to know who's accountable on a process that runs on email. And it's also really hard to maintain the follow-ups that need to happen. And so we'll walk through a few of the aspects of the detail page to show how this brings structure and it brings, uh, it brings visibility as we're trying to manage these issues. So the first thing you'll notice is each incident has an ID. So there's a clear lookup for this particular issue. Each issue has a status, so we can know where that problem is in its life cycle. Is it being disputed? Uh, are we gathering documentation? Are we waiting for somebody? Um, and it also has a type. We can know firsthand whether or not there are, it's a logistics related deduction, uh, if it's trade related, uh, or maybe it's a penalty like an accessorial charge or a layover, right? All these can be tracked automatically uh, within the incident type. We can also start to see the value at risk, which is really important for being able to measure how big these impacts are and whether or not you know, the root cause was a carrier or the warehouse or delivery, or maybe even the retailer's fault. One of our customers was telling us that they had a handful of their deductions were caused actually by the communication between the buyer at Walmart and the DC and the fact they didn't coordinate the delivery window properly. And so the carrier wasn't allowed in, they get the deduction, the, our customer gets the deduction. Uh, and it's just, it's, just not, it's just not right. You wanna keep track of those and be able to dispute them. Um, the second thing you'll notice here is the people involved on the issue. So as I mentioned already, every issue should have an assignee, every deduction should have an assignee. And the nice thing about this is it can change over the course of solving the problem or investigating. So initially, as I mentioned, it may be accounts receivable. We may, we may need to reassign that to somebody else. We might want to reassign it to uh, somebody, for example, at the warehouse site, uh, somebody in logistics. And if we need to complete a cycle count or we need to go check um, you know, a particular document like a, like a bill of lading or a proof of delivery, we can reassign it to those parties so that they can, they can actually be notified that they're on the hook to solve this problem. And this is different, obviously, from maybe, you know, sending an email to somebody where they can't look that up. They can't look up the emails that they're assigned to. But in an exception management approach, they can look up the incidents they're assigned to. They can get notifications on those. The second, uh, the second thing here are the followers. So the followers are like folks who would be CC'd on an email normally. These are the people who need to be informed or perhaps involved in the investigation. Now, one of the nice things about using an exception management approach that's specifically tailored to supply chain is that you can actually add 
uh, folks who don't even work for your company as a follower. This is important because a lot of these issues require collaboration with people who don't necessarily work for your company. And where we see, you know, something like collaboration within an ERP system, which is a financial, a financial uh, system, we don't want third parties accessing our ERP system. When they are using an, ex an exception management approach, um, we can extend that collaboration to include those different parties. And then obviously we wanna keep track of the issues uh, and make sure that we're resolving them within a particular window. Many of the retailers have really stringent requirements on uh, how soon or uh, not how soon, but by when you need to dispute and submit a dispute for a deduction. Um, Target I've heard is two weeks, you know, uh, Amazon a couple, maybe a couple more weeks, uh, Walmart maybe 90 days, whatever it is, we wanna be keeping track of our deductions by due date to make sure that we're uh, resolving them in a timely manner. One of the things that we've introduced is the ability to see related incidents. And this is looking at all of the other deductions within the system and seeing which ones are similar, which ones have the same product or the same retailer or the same site and being able to match up those patterns automatically. One of our customers told us that they, they started to identify a retailer who had been deducting them automatically every week for no reason. And they were able to identify that pattern by seeing the related incidents. If you click view all, you can basically see a list that's sorted based on those different parameters that match up the different incidents, whether it's the product or the, the distribution site, whatever it, whatever it might be. And so they basically now had a report and they were able to go back to that customer and say, hey guys, what's, what's the deal? You're, you're, you're charging us automatically for this, it's not justified. Now, as the issue is being resolved, again, we don't want to you know, maintain a process where there's collaboration happening in two different places, in email or in, in the system. And so in the dispute process, we want all the back and forth to happen within the platform. And that can happen via the comments thread, which can be you know, back and forth. You can see the example here of different parties collaborating, but it can also take the form of tasks. And the tasks are really nice because a lot of these issues require follow-ups. If you're sitting in accounts receivable, you may need logistics to follow up. If you're in logistics, you may need the, um, you may need the carrier to get back to you with a document or something like this. Or if you're on the sales side and you need an update on something, uh, you might at mention or, or post a task. But the tasks can be assigned to both internal team members and also members of an external uh, of an external party. And so this is really nice when we need to basically keep track uh, of that request and maybe assign a due date on that request. So, hey, if my deduction needs to be submitted by December 15th, uh, I want the carrier to provide the proof of delivery on this invoice, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the week prior. And one of the things we hear when the process is, is being managed in an Excel spreadsheet or in an email that's really hard is just keeping track of all the follow-ups. You know, you have to go through this spreadsheet and maybe sort it by last updated or, uh, or who has the action item. But when you use task management integrated into the deduction detail page here, you can set those due dates and follow-ups automatically. And the platform will actually notify the assignee uh, and all the followers on the incident if the task has not been completed by that date uh, or if that task is coming up. Uh, and so it's just a nice way to automate those follow-ups. Another huge time investment that we see is, uh, is in these follow-ups that the platform can take, a, take care of automatically. Now, what is it like for somebody who's assigned a task, who's actually you know, asked to follow up on something? Uh, they get an email notification with the context of the issue. Hey, here's what's going on. Here's the task that you've been assigned. And it may be providing a document like a proof of delivery. They can click on a link in that, in that notification that brings them straight to the detail page of the incident where they can then take that action. They can you know, perhaps uh, move the, the status of their task from uh, open to in progress. Uh, and then they can actually add that document like a signed bill of lading, a proof of delivery, uh, or even maybe a photo of, uh, of a damaged product as an attachment on the incident. When they do that, the followers on the incident can get notified of that action. Uh, they can be told, hey, you know, the carrier has now uh, uploaded proof of delivery XYZ. 
and the carrier can then complete their task. Again, this applies for internal folks as well. If you need your warehouse to uh, complete a cycle count on a SKU to identify if there was a leftover, if there were leftover units, um, right? All of this can be enabled uh, for both of those different groups. And uh, it's accessible on our mobile app too. So if you have teams mobile at the warehouse who need to be just updating, updating this as they go, um, they can actually keep a running list of all their tasks within the task, ma task management module at the top to be able to just punch through those different things that they're assigned to. They don't have to click through all the incidents, they can just update the tasks as they go and even create filters on this view as well, showing only the, the tasks that are still open or only their tasks that are in progress. So we've seen teams at a, at a warehouse who maybe have a cycle count um, request from somebody in planning or somebody in AR Maybe if they don't have mobile devices, they have a, a standing laptop that they can keep a, a task list like this up and be able to see those issues. Now, once the issue has been resolved, the team can actually close that deduction and tag it with a resolution. Now, they may actually want to wait until they've submitted it for uh, dispute and be able to actually denote whether or not the dispute was accepted. Uh, was it rejected? If so, why? Was it because we ran out of time? Was it because we were missing data? Um, or is it something that we're just writing off? You know, maybe something it was our fault and we're gonna, we're gonna write it off. Once that's done, uh, the incident will be closed. And at any given time, but especially after an incident is closed, it's often helpful to see what happened on the issue. And so we have an activity log tracking all the different touches on the incident, which follower was added, when did they reply with a comment, right? All of that is then there for audit purposes uh, for being able to see who knew what and when. So we talked about the first step, which is tracking all the issues. Everything needs to be in one place. We talked about the process for uh, managing the dispute and collaboration process between the different parties. You have the ability to assign the incidents, collaborate on the problem, uh, and, and keep the incident detail page as the single source of truth. Let's talk about that third step, which is then adjusting. Uh, how do we then start to measure the process of investigating and disputing these issues in a way that we can actually act upon? And if any of you heard uh, our webinar with Blue Diamond a couple of weeks ago, Blue Diamond Growers, almond, almond manufacturer, um, it's a great example of a real life customer uh, doing this in, in their business. That webinar is available on demand uh, should, you, should you want to um, take a look at it. The key of that webinar though, and what other customers are doing to actually help address the issues is using the analytics um, to identify number one, recurring patterns, and number two, uh, being able to actually implement um, resolution processes that address those recurring patterns and measure the effectiveness of their ability to address those issues. And so what does that look like? Well, you may wanna measure it by account and see again, for one customer, for Walmart, you know, what are all of our deductions? Um, let's, let's address those issues. Again, the filters that you had in the report on the incident list are the exact same filters that you have uh, within the analytics. So we can look at this by account, which is often very helpful. Being able to see, you know, maybe at one particular account, do we have, um, you know, multiple distribution centers that we're shipping into, and are we getting 80% of our deductions from one distribution center? Why are we seeing all of them, uh, you know, on their San Bernardino distribution center, and we're not seeing any in the six others ac across the country? What's going on with that process? Um, the the ability to then drill into what those specific issues are is really easy. I can click on that, uh, that element of the dashboard and then see only the incidents related to that distribution center. So I can start to see, okay, within, within deductions, is it shortages, is it overages? Um, are we seeing a lot of returns, right? What are those issues? And then being able to see, okay, is it one product or is it multiple? So we've had customers then be able to see that they're having recurring shortages within a particular distribution center. And then they can easily pivot that and see what's the value at risk. Okay, it's 182K over the last quarter. Um, 
why don't we stage more inventory at that location? And often, you know, we're all under the pressure of reducing inventory, but when we can see the trade-off, right, is the cost of staging that inventory really worth the penalties, we can make a data-driven decision um, to be able to justify a particular action. So we've had customers who, who identify issues within an account the way that I've just shown. Um, you also may want to identify issues across accounts. So again, we can easily then back back out and see, okay, across my accounts, uh, what are the recurring patterns? Uh, I was on the phone with a customer who told us about one pattern that they noticed across a customer, across customers, but it was all on one product. And they started to see an unusual pattern there and being able to identify, okay, well, what, well, let's drill into that product. Let's see what the product, what product issue was. And what they identified is that they had a lot of damaged, damage related deductions um, that were caused by packaging. And what they realized is that they had made a decision to make the packaging on their product thinner. Uh, it wasn't the cardboard or whatever it was, wasn't as thick. And so, and in transport, it was actually causing, uh, it was actually being damaged more frequently, which was resulting in the penalties. And again, then being able to see, okay, well, what was the dollar value of that? What was the dollar value of all those penalties? Um, we can actually see, okay, you know, we've had whatever, 150K in, in penalties because of this. It's not worth the material savings that we're getting uh, by making the packaging thinner. Um, or maybe it is, and you actually just know that uh, versus just the guessing, and you can actually budget for it. So that's, these are just two examples of being able to identify uh, recurring patterns, recurring issues. The nice thing about this is it really helps from a finance perspective um, in a few ways. The first way is in, in real time, if we're within a month or a, a given period, and we start to see the number of uh, deductions or the dollar value of deductions start to exceed what we would expect from an accrual standpoint, we can adjust our accruals mid-quarter. Um, and so if we're mid, you know, maybe mid-quarter, um, mid we start to see, hey, on week two of the quarter, uh, I'm seeing a huge spike in deductions. I need to address uh, and adjust for my accruals. Uh, to make sure we don't get walloped at the end of the quarter. But the second is actually being able to forecast more accurately. And a good example, just to tie back to that last one is, hey, if we're seeing a lot of issues with the packaging, but we don't want to, we, we made a decision just to accept that we're going to have thinner packaging, great, but let's forecast and budget for uh, a larger number of deductions uh, because we know that we have you know some good data behind the fact that that's going to continue and that's going to keep happening. Um, so that's, that, that's just a couple ways from the, uh, from the finance lens that this can help in accruals and forecasting. From the sales lens, um, sales, the folks who are in sales love the ability and the visibility to be able to see how their accounts are being impacted. And so they can have specificity and know exactly how many of their issues are because of internal issues, uh, internal processes that need to be fixed versus the customer is uh, maybe needs to fix some of their processes. And we've seen this help folks in operations and in sales uh, with their next, you know, MBR, QBR with their retailer to be able to actually have the data and go in there and tell them, no, the reason that we've had, you know, 70K or, uh, you know, 100K this month in deductions is because at this particular distribution center, the buyer and the delivery uh, or the receiving coordinators are not aligned and they're having issues with their delivery windows, right? Maybe that's the key root cause that jumps out. And being able to actually present that data in a way that's objective, not subjective, uh, is, has been a huge unlock for folks who are having these conversations. On the operations side, it helps often with uh, identifying internal, maybe uh, pick, pack, and ship process issues, uh, whatever those issues might be that need, uh, that are driving the issue, the, the systemic problems that can be fixed. Uh, we've had customers who have spun up, you know, uh, an automated warehouse and invested a lot in uh, getting that up and running um, all to realize that all their deductions when they went live started coming from that automated warehouse. And it, whether it was because of a, you know, a master data issue or because of a, a, a planning issue, uh, being able to make those corrections and adjustments in real time um, has been, has been a huge unlock. And if you go listen to the, the webinar we did with blue diamond, like I mentioned um, you can hear, uh, some of the savings that they got in a very short period of time. 
But then the other thing is now, now that we've made an adjustment, like fix a, fix a lead time or uh, make an adjustment on a pick, pack and ship process, whatever it is, we need to be able to measure that improvement. And we talk about the, the Peter Drucker quote a lot, you know, what, if what you can measure, you can improve. And again, when we look at the current state of these issues being managed in email and Excel, uh, really hard to measure any kind of systemic improvements outside of just a gross dollar amount. Um, but within, within a platform like this, we can actually measure with a lot more specificity, a lot of, a lot more metrics. So we can see, for example, the number of, the number of particular issues that we're starting to see. If I want to flip that and see the dollar amount, you know, I've already shown that a couple of times how you can easily do that. Um, but we also want to see not just the number of issues, but how, how quickly are we resolving them, right? Does it, are we resolving them faster or is it taking us longer? What's the difference between issues or deductions that we can dispute successfully or issues that we don't dispute successfully in terms of average time to resolve? Um, how, how severe are the issues? Are we reducing the overall you know, dollar amount uh, on average that, that are typically impacted? Are we we're making these issues smaller? And then are we addressing them in a more timely manner, right? Incident aging. Are we able to pick them up, uh, reassign them and, and get them resolved more quickly. And so this is again, a world that's a little bit, maybe a different way of thinking than we are today. We're thinking in the world of you know, exception management, incident management. Um, where the teams are managing all of these issues today. All of these problems are being uh, managed, resolved uh, as the teams firefight and, and try to do their best to do it. The problem is we can't measure it and we can't measure it because it's being done in email. And so again, that, that process of you know, being able to start to track, dispute, adjust uh, and repeat is something that as it relates to deductions that folks can, can, up, can get up to speed uh, and, and get a huge return. Now, we mentioned already the, the different ways of uh, uploading deductions. So from directly creating the form to sending an email over to bulk upload to, to API, right? A lot of different ways. The nice thing about this is that we can get this up and running for folks and start to enable proce a, a process within one week, right? It doesn't, you know, items one through four require no, no internal IT, uh, nothing required to get up and running other than um, kicking off uh, an environment and, and starting to run the process within the environment. Um, and so as folks who are, you know, thinking about their, uh, their readiness process with Walmart or, you know, facing deductions from other, uh, from other sides, um, this is a process that can help bring organization, uh, make the process more efficient, more clear, and also enable some of that continuous improvement um, and, uh, and the ability to adjust and measure uh, over time. So if anybody has questions, you know, feel free to pop them over to the group chat. If not, feel free to reach out, contact me, Kyle at Elementum or Elementum.com. And I'll be happy to follow up with you. So thanks for joining the, this first uh, installment of our webinar series. And uh, we'll share the link with everybody uh, and hope you all have a great week.